This is the Belfast 43. It is the main campaign ship from the Back to Belfast campaign. And back to Belfast because we already have a Tier 6 Belfast in our port. The ship has been out for quite some time. I personally got the ship during the St. Paddy's Day event this year and it is an awesome ship. So can you expect the Tier 7 to be any better or worse or what's the deal? Well, let's go ahead and check out the ship and the commander who I've got Reginald Tierwit, and that is because the Belfast 43 is completely underwhelming. All the reviews that you see out there are rather subpar, so I thought that I would change it up and we are actually going to showcase a Smogathon version of the Belfast 43. And you can see here for the consumables, the Belfast 43 has sonar, radar, and smoke, as does the Belfast uh, Tier 6 version. It has sonar smoke and radar right there three of each of those consumables with tenant which uh, was my commander for the uh, tier six belfast and that was an awesome build i have no problem in the open water with the tier seven belfast 43 with tenant as a commander uh, you completely get blown out i was having very bad luck with that ship with tenant so i decided to change it up and go with reginald tierwit uh, to get the Smogathon, especially since I have him ranked up to 16.4. And his base trait is True Grit, which reduces the torpedo launcher reload time, as well as helps out the steering gear impairment. And for the inspirations, I have Gunther Luchin's Gimlet, and it increases the cruiser's main battery armor piercing shell damage. And then I have Yamamoto right through, which again helps out the cruiser's armor piercing shell penetration. So in general, I am looking to try to maximize the armor piercing chances with the ship. Uh, this was my first chance. And as you're gonna see in the highlight, the ship really excels at setting fires with this setup and not so much any armor piercing uh, shell damage. So I may have to change around these inspirations, but this is what I had for the highlight uh, video that you're going to see. And here, Subsurface Venture is his first skill. Uh, torpedo speed is improved, as is the launcher reload time, but it does uh, decrease the destroyer main battery reload time. Luckily, this is not a destroyer, so that will not uh, uh, come into effect here. And then the second skill is look at me now. Sea detectability range is improved by 6%. And then here, back in stock, torpedo launcher reload time is improved. I guess I could always go with perceptive if I wanted to see where the uh, enemy was. That is an option here with tier wit, as is stand or fall. Reload time reduction per 1% HP lost. I don't think that that is really much of a help. I'm not really sure what this is, to be honest with you. And then Torpedo Safari, if I wanted a little bit more torpedo range and destroyer main battery range would be impacted. So maybe I do want to check out an increased torpedo range in future builds. And then here, smoke on the water. This is the big deal with the Smogathon build is you want to help out your smoke screen dispersion time as well as its deployment time right here. And then for the legendary skill, this is the big deal with legendary uh, rank four, especially when you have not ranked up to 16 and Smogathon. Smoke screen generator cooldown time is improved by 50% and this is big time right here as is two additional smoke generator charges. That is awesome. But the smoke screen deployment time is cut in, uh, in half, cut down by 50%. Also torpedo speed is improved by 10 knots and that is when an allied ship is within three and a half kilometers. And so if you can get that to happen, that would really help you out right there but in general uh, most cases I don't find that I'm within the range of an ally they're kind of out doing their own thing it seems like and then let's take a look at the upgrades for the Belfast 43 I did try to set the ship up as close as I could to the Belfast tier 6 aiming systems mod 1 dispersion time of the main battery is improved by 7% torpedo launcher traverse speed is improved by 20% and a secondary battery firing range and its dispersion is improved by 5% respectively and then 
The second upgrade is steering gears mod 2, rudder shift time is 20%, and this is a holdover from when I was running um, Tenant. I was trying to go for an agile build, so this is basically an agile build setup that I literally added Tenant to see how that uh, would make a difference but you know ultimately I probably do want to go with concealment because I can sneak up closer to the enemy but for this highlight video that you're gonna see I literally put uh, tear wit in instead of tenant and uh, the results uh, that you're gonna see is what happened right there um, but yeah uh, upgrade slot 3 is steering gears mod 3 rudder shift time is improved by 40 percent and the repair time is improved by 80 percent and then the last upgrade is main battery mod 3, main battery reload time is improved by 12%, and the main battery traverse speed is uh, cut down by 13%. It's uh, negative 13% right there, so it's a little bit worse. Uh, may go with a quicker torpedo launcher reload time, but the torpedoes are really um, a secondary component here for a defensive measure unless the torpedo safari in tier wits uh, skill setup which I may try in a future battle uh, that might help out right there but for now I have gone with main battery mod 3 let's check out the let out you have your normal ammunition high explosive shells armor piercing shells and torpedoes which we'll get into in a minute as far as consumables, you have the damage control party. Duration is 5 seconds with a reload time of 57 seconds. And there is an unlimited number of these consumables. And here you have the sonar. Uh, this is, I, again, I, I'm fairly certain this is almost identical to the tier 6 as far as the consumables available. And here we have sonar or the uh, defensive AA fire, which I'm not really sure who would use that. But we've gone with sonar here. And torpedo detectability range is three and a half kilometers. Detection of ships is five kilometers. Duration is 100 seconds with a reload time of 114 seconds. And there are two consumables. You have two radar consumables here or the fighter patrol. And the radar consumable has a detection range of nine kilometers, which is pretty darn good. Duration is 30 seconds, which again is a little bit higher. I, I think most of the radars are around 20 seconds or so. Reload time is 171 seconds and there are two consumables. And here, this is actually a big difference right here from the tier six. Uh, the smoke generator on the Belfast 43, you see there are seven charges, especially with Tierwit adding two additional charges. So on the Tier 6 Belfast, you had three smoke charges. But in this case, the consumable duration is 8.7 seconds. Smoke screen dispersion time is 43.2 seconds. And the reload time is 33.2 seconds, so you have a new smoke charge ready 10 seconds before your existing smoke screen is up. And since you have seven of these consumables, that is over 280 seconds worth of a smoke screen that you can potentially have at one time. That's about five minutes worth of a smoke screen. So uh, that can uh, come in handy if you don't have your smoke screen spoiled by a red team a torpedo or a radar or if they rush you that's another way that you will be spoiled with your smogathon session but it just depends on the battle you might wonder whether we can do a smogathon with the tier 6 belfast so here i've got original tier wit set up in the tier 6 belfast so let's check out the consumable and we're going to look at the smoke real quick and here you can see the dispersion time is 111.2 seconds and the reload time is 120 so the reload time takes nine seconds longer than its dispersion time so in the classic smogathon build like with the minotaur or even the belfast uh, 43 the reload time is shorter than the dispersion time and that's what makes the smogathon happen where you can stay in smoke for an extended period of time so you cannot do a smogathon with Tierwit in the Tier 6 Belfast. And if for boosters right now, I have the epic boosters across the board, but depending on the battle, that could definitely change. And the ship comes with a Type 9 permanent premium camouflage. Sea detectability range and incoming fire dispersion is 4.5% respectively. 
and the stats survivability hit points is 38,400 armor is 6 to 114 millimeter and I'm gonna tell you right now this is like a destroyer do not get hit torpedo damage reduction is 16% which is I'm gonna say not really existent not it's not very good uh, artillery you have 12 guns they reach out to 15.8 kilometers Real time is 8.4 seconds, so it is about a second slower than the Tier 6 Belfast. Traverse time is 29.6 seconds, which is okay. HE shell damage, you have a maximum shell damage of 2450 with a 9% chance of setting fire, so that is pretty good, and you will see a lot of fires started in the highlight clip that we have. Armor piercing shell damage is 3240 for the maximum shell damage error. Secondary armament. You have 12 guns, 5.2 kilometer range, 3 second reload time, 1500 maximum HE shell damage with a 6% chance of setting fire. Torpedoes, you have two launchers of three torpedoes each. They reload in 55.4 seconds. Maximum damage is 15,867 if you can get a hit and make this all happen. Torpedo range is 8 kilometers and the torpedo speed is 65 knots. So with Torpedo Safari with uh, Tearwood, it will be interesting to see how much the torpedo range is increased. But for the highlight you're going to see, I did not have Torpedo Safari selected. Here are your defensive AA fire and this looks like uh, this will clear the sky pretty well and I think you do see some airplanes shot down during the highlight clip you're going to see. Maneuverability. Maximum speed is 33.5 knots. Turning circle radius is 680 meters. Rudder shift time is 4.8 seconds and that is basically cut in half from the default Belfast 43 without any modifications or commander setup. And a concealment, detectability range by sea is 10.7 kilometers, range by air is 7.2 kilometers, and detectability range while firing in the smoke is 5.7 kilometers, and that is very important in a smogathon build here. And the armor, this is pretty uh, lightly armored right here. A lot of green and blue, you don't really see this very much in a tier seven. So you can get uh, over penetrated by almost any ship in the game, I believe. And here, let's take a look at the Citadel and uh, you will definitely have a problem here with plunging fire. You can see that is 16 to 14 millimeters up on top. And down uh, below here is 25 to 26 millimeters. And the front of the Citadel is 34 to 75, but the bow is almost non-existent as far as helping you out. And you do have some thicker protection up here, but for the most part, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you go out in the open water, you will get removed from that particular game rather quickly from that particular match. Overview, sequential, torpedoes can be launched one by one. I'm gonna to have to remember that. I was forgetting about that in the matches I've played so far, so I'm gonna to have to experiment with that at a later date. Hidden, good concealment means the ship can get closer to enemies before being detected. So maybe I do want to change the upgrade slot number three to concealment. Clearing fog, limited smoke screen duration, and that is true, but maybe with the smogathon with Tierwit, we can overcome that a little bit and maybe get a little bit better score than trying to play a conventional cruiser build uh, as you would with uh, Tenant or Frasier. So then the Belfast 43 was one of the most powerful and largest light cruisers in the 1930s. The ship's main battery comprised 12 152 millimeter guns complemented with dual purpose artillery, torpedo armament, and aircraft handling equipment. This version of the ship reflects her 1943 outfit. Entered service in 1939 and there were two ships in the series. All right, well that's it for the setup of the ship and the commander. Let's go out in a standard battle and check out the Smogathon build. All 
All right, so we're in Standard, we're in Tears of the Desert, and I never thought in a million years I would ever use a Smogathon build ever again after the experiment with Tearwit and the Minotaur, but here you go with the Belfast. This seemed like uh, my best option to get some kind of uh, advantage. I had to change something up, and Smogathon was my one try, so I didn't optimize Tearwit for fire starting because frankly I have no idea if Belfast 43 is going to be any good at Citadel hits with the armor pierce, piercing shells so I stuck with that and it turns out that in this match we primarily get fires so what do you know here I'm taking a look at the teams and uh, nothing too exciting here it is an aircraft carrier match so we will have a challenge at staying hidden because of the aircraft, but I do believe as the match progresses, you're going to see that we do get um, several aircraft shot down. And we're just going to come up here. I, I don't believe I'm really at risk right now of being spotted by anybody because of all the islands. And there's a Baltimore. It's not really broadside. If it was broadside, I'm sure I would switch over to armor piercing and give that a try. So for right now, I'm just going to stick with the HE fire shells. And so the ship is pretty accurate. So that's why I did not go with Scott as an inspiration because uh, the ship seemed kind of accurate. Uh, the main guns seemed pretty accurate the way that they were. So I'm really hoping at a future time I will get some armor-piercing performance out of the ship. But there we are taking more shots at the Baltimore over there. And those look like they're going to be some great hits and we do start a fire. We got five hits out of that so that is awesome. And the fire is starting to count up. He did not damage Khan which is awesome. Now we are spotted by the red team aircraft carrier and we do start another fire so here you go right early in the match we started two fires and there's a lion coming up and you can see that the destroyer set a smoke screen there and that is effectively helping me out as if I had my own smoke screen going I think and this smoke is going to stay up for quite a while so here I'm taking advantage of this and I do not have to deploy my smoke just yet and yeah you can see that we are very accurate here we did start a third fire the lion is broadside so all those shells are going to have a great opportunity to hit and there are 10 hits out of 12 shots so that is awesome and there we do get a shot down aircraft two shot down aircraft so there you go we're spotted I'm still not uh, using the smoke yet because I'm using this huge smoke screen right here to I, I believe to great effect so now we're spotted by that destroyer I believe and there we do start the smogathon and or we do start the first smoke screen uh, not the smogathon the Smogathon is a continuation of the smoke screens, I believe. And so now we're taking aim at the Kigero right there. And we do have six fires started, and we have racked up 36,000 damage and counting. And the Kigero gets taken out. I believe those shots would have certainly destroyed the Kigero right there. But there's a Carcilio that is a great target right there. So. Uh, sitting in the smoke here you can see we've got eight seconds to go and we are ready to go with the next smoke screen so the smoke screen has cooled down and recharged and there you see I am activating the second smoke charge so now we are uh, detected by a radar ship but I don't see any incoming shells I'm not really sure what radar ship that is but now we did get hit by fire from somebody and the radar is gone so I'm not really sure where the radar was coming from but there's a lion way out there that certainly couldn't have been the radar so I'm not really sure where that radar came from it could be behind these islands right here 
So these are all battleships right here. And yeah, I don't see where the radar came from, but I can't be worried about that now. Here you can see that the smoke charge has cooled down and I'm ready for another smoke charge. And we are spotted. I, I did let the smoke expire a little bit. As soon as we're spotted, I hit the smoke. Uh, the third smoke charge. So now we have four left. And I was visible just long enough for them to get a bead on me. And I believe it's this King George back here. And there's a raid, uh, there's a cruiser. Uh, it could be that that is where the radar came from. I can uh, see what kind of ship that is. We'd be able to tell probably. But Problem I just solved, move sir. around just a little bit in the smoke and don't really seem to have a problem. Uh, with continually getting hit from blind fires. And there I hit the the other smoke, smoke uh, the next started. smoke up, because this King George would certainly wipe me out as soon as I was visible. Smoke screen set. We're up to 51,000 damage. That was a Fuji there, and to be honest, I'm not really sure if the Fuji has uh, radar or not. And there the King George is certainly within range and I'm going to take some shots at him with those torpedoes as well as these HE shells and it looks like he is backing up. At least it looked like he was backing up. Maybe he's just sitting there. But we do start yet another fire with nine more hits. So we're up to eight fires, 62,000 damage and counting. 104 main gun hits so that's a pretty good amount of main gun hits they're invisible for just a second a split second and i hit the next smoke charge and smogathon is continuing but there you can see i was visible for just long enough for them to get a beat on me and it is unbelievable what a short amount of time you have to be visible before the human players on the red team to absolutely target you and wipe you out in general. And I'm not necessarily talking about these exact players, I'm talking about the human players in general in this game. And that is just unbelievable how quick you will get uh, targeted and taken out in the right circumstances. But it looks like the King George is starting to rush us. He is 5.8 kilometers away. If he hits 5.7, I will be visible when when I do take a shot. And there you can see that I was visible for just a second there. And he is backing up. He is backing away from me. Smoke screen set. So we have one more smoke charge to go. And then the Smogathon party will be over with. And here I did outrun my smoke accidentally. That was a, a mistake. I did take out the King George though. And so it's sort of like no harm, no foul because I am outside of the smoke. But the King George got taken out and the Fuji is behind the island there. So for now, I am okay at the moment. We're up to 92,000 damage. So this is a unbelievable score I think normally I would get blown out fairly quickly especially with the tenant and the conventional cruiser commander build I have gotten close to 70 or 80 thousand damage though I would get wiped out on uh, all these matches I would get close to 80 thousand damage with the smogathon and there I did hit the smoke and I believe I did overrun my uh, smoke because I was traveling too fast. Um, this lion right here has me targeted and this is a bad deal right here. Even though I'm moving around, I'm trying to use the steering gears, this really is kind of sluggish and 95,000 damage. I don't really expect to be around much longer. There we only have 1,750 health left. So now my strategy is to run and hide and hope that I can outlast the match somehow. And we're going to go around the island over here. We're outside of visibility. I'm going to meet up with my friendly aircraft carrier over here on my right.
We are ahead a little bit, unbelievably. But uh, not for long. It looks like the red team is capturing the epicenter. So that whole thing minutes. could switch around really quick, especially when there's basically five minutes left in the match. That lion is in range, but I don't believe I have a shot on him. Yeah, the island indicator is up, so I don't have a shot on him. There, I'm looking at the lion. Yeah, that doesn't look like I have anywhere close to a good shot at him. There is a Kaga over there, and it looked like temporarily I did have a shot. And it keeps fluctuating between a shot or no shot, because the island indicator pops up. So I did take a shot at the Kaga, and let's see if we can get some hits. Well, what do you know, we did get three hits. That was unbelievable. Very surprising. We're up to 98,400 at long-range hits here, so... Now I'm being spotted by somebody. I assume that it is a red team, the red team destroyer that's left. And there's the lion. There you can see the same thing as with the Kaga. Now it looked like I, I had a, a shot at him, so I took the shot. We'll see if I can get some hits. And there I did get three hits. We're up to 100,370 damage. So that is a great score. Here's a biscuit, a black squea, which is almost gone. If I can get the guns to traverse quick enough, I might be able to get a shot at him and take him out. And there I basically nick him for just a couple hundred damage. Not enough to take him out. There are the torpedoes that I've dodged. Now I am spotted by the aircraft and there that was long enough for me to be spotted and destroyed. Like I said, it's unbelievable what a short amount of time you're visible before you get wiped out. And that guy had like no health left when he wiped me out. So that's it for the Smogathon build for the Belfast 43. While I was in the smoke, I was able to get some pretty good damage right there, but it is a challenge out in the open water. While I find playing the ship with a normal cruiser commander to be uh, kind of tedious and a really bummer of a challenge, I do find the Smogathon fun uh, to uh, be able to get some good performance out of that setup. So there is that. So I think I'm going to continue tweaking the Smogathon build, see if I can get an even better score. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it. Smoke screen set.